you're welding heavy stuff, you put a 30 degree angle on there and a 30 degree angle on the other side. Yeah. It gives you a 60 degree V. That's called a weld prep. Okay. Um, but you obviously with something that thin, you can't do it. So if you leave a gap, then you end up with weld in there as opposed to just trying to grind away to nothing, you know? doing all the little bits that need welding really before it goes to crimbo um, so I put some braces in the doors just welded those across so we can take the body took the body off the chassis and you remember I had to put that bit of wood back in the back oh yeah so I remade that because it didn't fit properly redrilled those because that didn't fit properly made that section nailed all that in so that's tied all the back end in um, Welded up the splits that were here where I had to cut it. Uh, welded these up on the A pillars, so I've got to grind that one off. This was really bad, just a shit repair, so I've um, cut that out and I'll just make another piece of metal and put that in there. Got to re weld this back up, make that little corner piece up. Um, and that pretty much is it, where you can go around the crimbo then to get. You know, he'll, he'll daffy it all up, tart it all up. I'll just put a little curve on that. When leaving it long, do you leave it a bit like a percentage over at all? Is it always... No, I mean that's fairly good for length, it's just I know I've got to cut that to taper that into there. But you always leave it... No, you always leave it slightly short, don't you, so the weld... Yeah, you want to leave a bit of a gap, because if you butt weld like that straight to that, when you grind that, there's no strength in it, so you want to leave sort of... Sort of like about the distance of your, dis your one mil disc cutter blade, yeah? Okay. So if you do that and then grind that off, yeah? There's no, there's no strength in it at all because okay. it's too thin to do what they call a weld prep. If you're welding heavy stuff, you put a 30 degree angle on there and a 30 degree angle on the other side. Yeah. It gives you a 60 degree V. That's called a weld prep. Okay. Um, but you obviously with something that thin, you can't do it. So if you leave a gap, then you end up with weld in there as opposed to just trying to grind away to nothing, you know? That's all right to there, isn't it? So if we put a shrink on that, bring that down, we should be looking all right, I think, don't we? It looks pretty good to me. Grind that off a little bit. All right, let's get a shrinker. Smidge more right on the end, doesn't it? That'll do us, I think. Good, doesn't it?
Right, let's get that ground up. Sweet. So then all we need to do is just get the one on there. Normally what we would do is cut this section out and butt weld that in properly. It'd be better if it was even on the inside. At least then you can you're not bringing out into your wing aperture but i'm going to be here for like i say for days and days and days you, you shouldn't really lay things over like that and just i mean that's gas welded badly all i can do is make good the best i can you know but normally like say so we cut all that in that's all cut in neat and tidy and well yeah i mean it still needs finishing tidying up tidying up but it just makes it life a lot easier to do it right in the first place, if you know what I mean. See how much further away I was holding the torch? If you're trying to fill holes, yeah, fill a gap you get that torch in really close it'll just blow it it'll just blow big holes in this okay so as you pull it away it it's, makes the weld not any less strong but not as hot so it it, it, it welds easier that went a lot easier than i thought it would Here to do, tidy all that up, <coughs> tidy that corner up, then weld. I've done all of this side, then I've got to weld those splices up there, grind that little bit off, and that's pretty much it, I think, really. Okay, Robin Buey. I think it's how you pronounce his name, a reference to WLC. Yep. He said, I'm curious, what's that book where you found the explanation for the springs of the seat? You know, when you sit on it? Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where did you find the explanation for that? It's in, oh, I've got to remember his name now, Bruce Palmer III, How to Restore Your Harley Davidson. I think, I think there's some reference to it in one of the manuals, but I can't remember which one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. And uh, what grease do you use on the WLA, WLC? Just straightforward, general purpose grease. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing special. special. Right. G. McCauley asks, <coughs> do you have anything on the throttle handle? Mine sticks when the end cap is tightened all the way. Right, okay. Um, you've got to make sure that the slider is free. Yeah. There's, there's all different parts to it. You've got to make sure that the spiral cable that goes down through the handlebars, yeah, isn't wound through the locator, which is like a disc with a groove in it, then you put a little grub screw in the handlebar and that stops yeah. the outer cable moving. But you don't want that wound too far through because that can make your handlebar butt up. Yeah. Um, then you've got your slider, then in that you've got a pin that goes in and then there's a circular washer 
that goes down over the pin, that only goes on one way. The bottom's flat, the top is tapered like that to match the circle of your twist grip. Okay. Um, put all that together, make sure that that all moves freely. Then they did do some with an extra washer on the end. Put your end screw in, making sure that it's not cross-threaded because you can wind them in cross-threaded and then you've got the end of your handlebar which is a tube like that yeah and that's square if you put that screw in cross-threaded yeah then the head of the screw will be over at an angle yeah and that can tighten up and stick and if everything looks okay and that isn't cross-threaded and there isn't an extra washer in there to take slack out yeah then basically you just shave the end of the twist grip very slightly and that will let it move freely. Okay. Um, yeah, there's quite a few moving parts in there. And also, it can be on the spiral on the inside. That's why I said to you on the other video, don't ever shop blast them. Strip them by hand because yeah. if you get grit in there, yeah. they're an absolute pig of a thing to oh, clean yeah, I out. Remember you, remember you going through that. Yeah, there, there's quite a few moving parts in there. But providing when you, before you put the nut on the end, the handlebar slides up and you've got where the handlebar comes along and raises like that then you put your twist grip on if there's a big gap there you know there's something wrong in this end because that should sit snugly against yeah. the raised area um yeah you just got to go through it bit by bit see that everything's sliding where it should do yeah, yeah. so when he says mine sticks when the end cap is tightened all the way yeah that could be it could be any one of those it could be the, the the outer cable is too far through and then it, it, in theory that outer cable shouldn't make it stick because it just means that your slider will be rotated around the groove a little bit further out yeah um but it, it all adds up um it can all add up and you might find it's like i say if it's pushing it too far that way on the raised handlebar but it might be sticking at that end not necessarily that end it's just pushed it that yeah. way yeah. so if you shave that end a little tiny bit um you should have a slight bit of movement in them not a lot just a little bit of movement okay alfie dog alfie dog alfie dog asks can ash tell me the difference between the type 1 and type 2 wla please i can do by looking on site off the top of my mind now i couldn't you got a 40 a 41 wla which is a completely different bike up to 1941 they were called 41 WLAs yeah after 41 they're called 42 WLAs but that could be 1942 43 44 or 45 yeah um, if you look on a website called um, Liberator it's a Dutch site that explains to you go scroll for it's a massive site that explains to you the difference between type 1 to type 7 or 6 or whatever it is yeah um, but that Liberator site is very, very, very good. Oh, good. Yeah, liberator.de, I think it is. Oh, look at that. Yeah, they, 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 there's just a little panel in there on one of the pages, and it tells you what air cleaner it should add on, wide mud guards, narrow mud guards, blah, 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 all that's type 1, type 2. Cool. Luke Martin asks, and this is referenced on one of the mini episodes. Mm hmm. It's episode 47, if you're interested. <laughs> Uh, what fuel pump is that and is it a low pressure one so the fuel pump on fuel the pump so that's back underneath on the rear subframe it's what they call a pusher pump not a puller pump a puller pump you put on the front yeah um no it would have just been a bog standard 12 volt it would be an aud number or an auc number i can look it up now if you want right so that was a 997 cooper four cylinder right the fuel pump on it is an auf 214 that's the original su number for the pump okay um so that's all you need to look up and it'll be a standard pressure on that it wouldn't be anything special because I mean, they weren't anything that special in back in the 60s you know carl barrett asks can you tell me the make of the piston ring tool used in the video and the ring cleaner as I'd like to try and get a hold of these tools, or are they old school tools that you have for a long time? No, they're not old school. I bought them when I did Dad's... I got them from America when I did Dad's first Buick. Um, whether they've got any names on them, I don't know. No, there's nothing there on that. No, I would just do an eBay search, to be honest with you. Oh, there you go. That's got... 
Yeah, Craftsman. They're an American make. I know I bought them in America. Okay. Yeah, that's Craftsman. But yeah, that that was I bought them in America. But I'm sure you must be able to get them here. Yeah. Yeah, that's just just a generic tool, isn't it? Do you have any round air filters in your collection for sale for the WLC? I mean, we don't hold parts, but where no. would you get? Uh, no, air they're filters? they're quite a rare item now. Because I think they were the same as the ones on the 741B Indian. Um, yeah, they're, they're quite a rare piece. You'll pay a lot of money for one of them now. So that's an eBay search or...? eBay search. Um, War Department is another website. They do a lot of genuine original stuff, but okay. they are very, very expensive. Yeah. But those round air filters, I know you're probably talking six, seven hundred quid, maybe more. Wow. Yeah, they're a lot, they're a lot of money. Because they were only on the early, early ones. Um, then they went to the square, and then there's there's different types of the square ones. You can get ones with a plate that's spot welded on. You can get ones where it's stamped into the casing. There's there's all. If you look on that um, liberator dot de or whatever it is, that explains to you again on that same passage yeah. what air filter should be on what and blah 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 blah. Okay. Um, but I know they're they're quite hard to get hold of those round ones, and they're a lot of money. They are a lot of money. So next week on the workshop. So nine, I think it's nineteen fifty-five. Morris Isis. Good name, eh? Good name. We like that. <laughs>